When Leroy Collins was governor of Florida back in the 1950s, one of his top priorities was bringing new industry into the state. We recently wandered around Collins's backyard amid 10 beautifully undeveloped acres in the heart of Tallahassee and talked about one of Florida's biggest prospects for economic development back then. It was none other than the reclusive billionaire Howard Hughes. In this week's historical segment, Governor Collins remembers making a trip to California to lure Hughes and his fortune to Florida. We did have an active program for attracting industry because our population increase was getting to the point where we needed other jobs beyond those provided by Florida business at that time. And so I made trips up to New York and around and speeches and all before people to uh, banking groups and, and lending groups and industrial groups. Uh, and I got the word that, uh, that uh, Mr. Hughes was interested in doing something important in Florida and uh, he wanted to talk with me about it. Uh, I got the message through Del Webb, who was the owner of the New York Yankees at that time, who was a contractor and who did a lot of the building of, of his um, plants and things. Well, to make a long story short, he wanted me to come out to California to talk with him. And uh, so I went out, took two or three people with me. He was, as everybody said he was, a very strange person. Uh, he would get up during our discussions and go over to the door like he thought he heard something on the other side of the door. And he was, he was kind of weird, but a very bright, very intelligent, and a very uh, attractive person to talk with and be with. I understand he insisted on flying to Palm Springs. Yes, he wanted to take us down there for lunch, and so we agreed to go. We went out to the, to the airport, and they taxied this plane up there, and we got on. It had uh, four people running the plane, two up front and then two in the back there. Uh, we got on and had seats in the back. Well, as soon as it got airborne, he, uh, came, uh, he came back to, and told me that he was going to take over the plane and fly it, and he wanted me to come up and sit in the co-pilot seat. Well, that did not appeal to me, but still, I was just doing everything, you know, for, in my job as governor, and I just had to work with this guy because I thought this was terribly important. And I went up and, and sat there, and he flew the, he was a great pilot. It wasn't, I never did have any doubt that he could fly the plane because he's a very skillful pilot. And we went on down, had a nice lunch, and then we started uh, back, and he, he uh, did the same thing. He said he wanted, and I told him, I said, I think, let me talk with some of these other people back here on this way back. No, I want you up there. I want you up there sitting with me. Well, he was so, after we got going, he was so fascinated by the fact that the atmosphere was so clear. There wasn't any smog. And as we went up the coastline there, he asked me the question, have you ever come, uh, flown from the Pacific Ocean, over the Pacific Ocean, and come into Los Angeles on a clear night like this, uh, just as it got dark? And I told him, no, I never had that experience. He said, well, you're going to have it. And so I said, oh, no, we better get on back there and, and, and all that. But no, no, you couldn't. You. So he proceeds to fly way out over the Pacific, out of sight of the land. And then he turns around and started back. And then on the horizon there, it was a magnificent thing. I, after it was all over, I felt very good that I had had this experience. But at the time, I was just terrified. Or well, the radio people were talking to him all the time about you know, what was going on with all the flights. It sounded like there were just planes everywhere around there. It was dark, but all these beautiful lights, you know, just coming on like some magnificent Christmas tree that was just spread over the whole horizon. And, but we finally got us down. And he, and then he fixed up a plane and sent us home. We went out on a commercial flight, but he sent us back home on one of his own, and put beds on it for us, and he couldn't have been nicer. <laughs> but what, uh, what he had in mind doing, he had in mind developing off the coast of Florida with land that he would make, 
a magnificent community that would uh, be committed to a, a health program like nothing had ever been envisioned before. He was going to bring these finest doctors in every field of medicine, these finest architects to, in the world, and all to, to design these facilities. He was going to have all of his, re his residential, his, 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 his museums, and he was going to have a total program out there. And he was going to finance all this himself. And he was going to do what he conceived of being the, the greatest thing ever done for the advancement of health of human beings. And I was fascinated by this, because this is kind of, I, mean, I like the, the, the spirit that he had and, and what he was reaching to achieve. And he got into a, a big wrangle, though. He, he also wanted to get, and we got support, local support in Dade County, the state support. We got it all worked out for him very satisfactorily, and he was just humming along. But he got into a big row up there with the uh, Congressional Committee in regard to the manufacture of jet engines. And um, this just caused him to go sour mm -hmm. on the whole thing. Now, he still got down at Miami a, a unit of a health program, uh, but it is not a, anything like what he had in mind and he had envisioned at the time we were talking. Thank you.